Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at another Standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're building a deck around Frog Hemoth, the 5 mana 4-4 four four Frog Horror from Forgotten Realms with Trample and Haste, and when Frog Hemoth deals combat damage to a player, we exile up to that many target cards from their graveyard and put a plus one plus one counter on Frog Hemoth for each creature card exiled this way, and we gain one life for each non-creature card exiled this way. So Frog Hemoth can become quite a large threat, and we do have a little bit of life gain synergy throughout the deck, as well as a bit of landfall synergy. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our two drops, where we've got the full playset of Lotus Cobra, which can give us extra mana with landfall, and we do also have the full playset of Evolving Wilds in our mana base to potentially trigger landfall twice in the same turn to ramp out some of our bigger threats like Frog Hemoth. We've got the full playset of Prosperous Innkeeper to mana 1-1, one, one. that makes a treasure when it enters a battlefield, so another way to potentially ramp. And then we also gain one life whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control. Then we also have two copies of Wither Bloom Command, not a card that sees a ton of play, but I think has just enough synergy in this deck. So we get to choose two modes between target player mills three cards, then we return a land card from our graveyard to our hand. So we can use this to mill ourselves if we really need to find a land, or we can also target the opponent in the hopes of filling their graveyard for Frog Hemoth, and then at the same time we can return a fetch land like Evolving Wilds from our graveyard back to our hand. Then a second mode can destroy targets non-creature, non-land permanent with mana value 2 or less. There's not too many of those in the format, but always nice when it lines up. Then target creature gets minus 3 minus 1 until end of turn, probably the most useful mode that can help us kill one toughness creatures. And finally target opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2 life, can also potentially enable some of our life gain synergies. Then at 3 mana we've got 3 copies of a Demogorgon's Clutches, another card that synergizes nicely with Frog Hemoth, as it makes the opponent discard 2 cards, mill 2 cards and lose 2 life, so that's a great way to fill the opponent's graveyard. Then we've got a full play set of Soul Shatter as a removal spell of choice, making each opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker with the highest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control. And then the full playset of Kazandu Mammoth as another great landfall creature that can also be played as a tap land, otherwise a 3-3 creature that gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, so that can potentially trigger twice with Evolving Wilds. Then at 4 mana we've got another underused card with the Nissa of Shadowed Bows, the 4 loyalty planeswalker with a landfall putting an extra loyalty counter on it, the plus 1 lets us untap target land we control, and we may have it become a 3-3 elemental creature with haste and menace until end of turn it's still a land, and then a minus 5 lets us put a creature card with mana value less than or equal to the number of lands we control onto the battlefield from our hand or graveyard with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So that's potentially a way for us to reanimate our frog hemoth from the graveyard. And then we also have the full playset of Binding the Old Gods as a powerful removal option that on the second chapter also finds a land, so perfect for enabling a landfall as well. And then the full playset of Valentin slash Lisette. We're mostly interested in the Lisette half, the 4 mana 4-4 four four legendary human druid, saying whenever we gain life we may pay 1 mana, and if we do, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, and those creatures gain trample until end of turn. So especially powerful alongside something like Kazandu Mammoth, that doesn't automatically have trample. Then we've got our full playset of Frog Hemoth, and topping off our curve, two copies of Vorinclex Monstrous Raider, the 6-6 legendary Phyrexian Praetor with Trample and Haste, that essentially doubles up all our counters and halves the opponent's counters, so very good against opposing sagas, and also very good with our own Binding Field Gods, which we'll get to the second chapter right away, great with our Planeswalkers, and of course great with Lissat that can put counters on the team. And then taking a look at our mana base, besides our four copies of Evolving Wilds, we've got four of the Black Green Pathway, and then a few creature lands with two copies of Lair of the Hydra, and two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant, and then four basic swamps and eight basic forests. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a somewhat sketchy hand, but it is... 
potentially quite powerful if we can combine Innkeeper with Lisette. So I'm going to try it for Inclex to also combo with the plus one counters from Lisette. Fetch up a forest and then, uh, yeah, we're off to the races. Opponent's got their own innkeeper. And they're gonna use a treasure to play Sentinel. So it looks like the mono green aggro deck. Cobra seems slightly better than Innkeeper for now. A Ranger class gains a life. They might have a Blizzard Brawl, but they don't have a third Snow Land yet. So it would be a trade. Alright, that's fine. And then... Kind of flanking, playing the Mammoth as a tap land alongside Innkeeper. And then next turn I can play Lissette, turn after Vorinclex, and then hopefully draw more creatures to combo with the plus one counter. Could pay the one mana now, but then I don't get to play Vorinclex, and Vorinclex also stops cards like Ranger's class from the opponent. So I think we decline, and then just pass it back. Depending on whether we draw land, we could also wait to play Vorinclex, so I can play it and pay the one from Lissette in the same turn. Opponent levels up Ranger class. And we take six. And another Ranger class, fair enough. Picked up Evolving Wilds. Alright, so now I'm liking the line of uh, Soul Shatter, Evolving Wilds. Next turn, Vorin Clex, pay to one to put two plus one counters on the entire team. So, I think we don't attack here, just play defense. And then wait on the Soul Shatter. So, if they're trying to Blizzard Brawl with Set with Mammoth, we can punish them. It's going to be a Seekas Chariot instead. That's fine. Now they can crew the Chariots and sacrifice that instead of the Kazandu Mammoth, but I'm okay with that exchange. Mammoth attacks. And we'll Soul Shatter and see what they do. Alright, they let go of the Mammoth. We'll fetch up a Swamp. Oof, this Clutches is also tempting. Get the opponent's last two cards. Hmm. It doesn't gain me any life though. So I'm not going to be able to grow Lissat to block Something like chariots, nah, it's gotta be for Inclex still. And then we'll pay the one. And that's a lot of plus one counters. So Lassant doesn't have a great attack since the opponent could double block with chariots and a token or just triple block. We could attack with Vorinclex, which seems reasonable. And then next turn we can hopefully make him discard a few cards.
It's going to be a pack leader. Maybe a level up of ranger class, although the level 2 now doesn't do anything with Vorinclex in play. Nope, it's going to be a pugilist, so opponent's empty-handed, so the clutches. It's just going to be a mill to deal 2 damage. Another innkeeper is excellent. Put more counters on the team. And any future creatures we play are just going to make that even more devastating. Alright. And yeah, opponent packs it in. They don't have any removal to deal with this situation. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a double Witherbloom command hand. So this could either go very well or very poorly based on how good command is. Although we do have Evolving Wilds to synergize with it. So I'm interested to keep. And then... I guess I could hang on to the Evolving Wilds to maybe synergize with Lotus Cobra. So I could already play a Nissan next turn if Cobra survives. Which it does not. Alright, so I'm gonna fetch. And then Command gets back my Evolving Wilds. And we can mill the opponents to set up a potential uh, Frog Hemoth in the future. Get back Evolving Wilds. So they appear to be a red-black sacrifice deck. Shambling Ghast we could kill. So we've got a couple options here. Could go for commands, killing Ghasts, and then get back Evolving Wilds again. Or we could play Mammoth, play Evolving Wilds. And then I'm probably fine to sacrifice it to a 4 mana next turn for Nyssa. And Lissette. Command can also synergize with Lissette. Yeah. Can fetch end of turn. In case that uh, helps against an opposing burn spell killing the Mammoth. Right, opponent hand the Deadly Dispute, so killing the gas would not have been the most value-oriented play. But they do have a lot of mana here. Can also destroy a treasure with Witherbloom command. Currently don't have a great answer to Goldspan Dragon. I might have wanted to fetch a response to that being cast in case they have a Dragon's Fire. But they could always kill the Mammoth in my upkeep, so I don't think it matters. Alright, so I can play this up Playland. Or I can just play Lissette, hit for 5. Which might be better here. And then next turn with her bloom commands can get back evolving wilds while draining the opponents, so we can pay the one for Lissette. So we could hit for a healthy amount. Although the opponent does have ten mana essentially. Spider Queen to make spiders. Could kill one with a command as well. Clutches. Alright, I mean, we have a few options here. So, Witherbloom command. 
definitely wants to get back Evolving Wilds, and then I think just drain the opponent so we can pay the one for Lissette. So I'm not gonna bother killing a spider, which we can attack past anyway with Trample. I wouldn't be able to clutch us if we pay the one for Lissette, but that's okay. So, drain the opponents, and then we'll keep milling the opponent too, I think. And if they don't have any interaction, this could just be a lethal. Alright, so we somehow got there. Despite our opponent having all the mana in the world, maybe they would have been better off just casting the Shadow Skull Smashing, killing our two creatures last turn. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a hand that could use some curve toppers, but uh, yeah, I don't hate keeping this. And then I'm probably fine fetching on turn one. Get a forests. Turn two innkeeper. Put into Black White Angel's deck. Elite Spellbinder is going to have a look. Probably gets rid of my Binding the Old Gods. And then next turn. We could play Nissa, though. She's going to be under pressure from two flying creatures. So probably better off just playing the Mammoth. And then I might hang on to Evolving Wilds to trigger Landfall twice. We'll see. Yeah, sure. So next turn I can play Nissa, play Evolving Wilds, which will also put two additional loyalty on Nissa. Opponent passes with three mana up. Then probably just gonna end up plussing. Could minus five put an innkeeper in play with two counters, is that worth it? Probably not. So I'm just gonna end up uh, plussing on one of my lands. Attack. And sure, I'll fetch. They might remove the Mammoth here. Yep. Gets exiled, so I can't even get it back with Nissa. Another Valkyrie. Yeah, now that the Mammoth is gone, we don't have as much pressure in play anymore. So the fact that they're forced to attack Nissa does buy us time, since we're not taking as much damage, but we're also not uh, necessarily winning the race, and our opponent's just gonna ignore Nissa. Sadly, don't have any creature to really cheat in play other than Innkeeper. Although that might be worth it here, honestly, if our opponent's gonna ignore Nissa anyway. Put Innkeeper in play and then just attack with Hydra. Or I could untap my land to be able to play Binding, killing either Spellbinder or Valkyrie. Yeah, and this is a close call. I 
think I have to remove a creature here. Another spellbinder to have a look. And now with the innkeeper exiled, I also cannot put it in play with Nistos minus five. All right, Frog Hemoth, that's a good draw. A lot of loyalty on Nissa. So I can put a six, six Frog Hemoth in play after playing Innkeeper. And uh, I think I still play my land out, even though I could hang on to it for future landfall cards. Sack. And now we have a realistic chance of winning the race. Still have our Lair of the Hydra. Nissa can make a Menace Land and next turn our creatures gain Death Touch, which is great with our Trampling Frog Hemoth as our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got our innkeeper to ramp into Frog Hemoth and then clutches to maybe fill the graveyard up against the blue reds. Innkeeper gets countered. I think I'm gonna end up playing a tapped mammoth next turn and then. Just clutches here. Next turn clutches again, play Tabbed Mammoth, and hopefully clear a path for Frog Hemoth. Trade for a counter spell. Opponent's not gonna have many creatures for Frog Hemoth to pick up plus one counter, sadly. All right, let's try. Into the royal to bounce it. At least it's got haste so we can attack right away. Triple into the royal in their graveyard. Opponent foretells a card, could be another counter spell. Well, no shortage of frog hemoths here. And then I could exile a few cards. Although could also leave those in their graveyard. And then maybe we can gain life later when it can synergize with something like Lisette. Well, let's go with like two. Alright, opponents discarding Magma Opus. So if they have something like Flame Painter, they can cast that out of the graveyard. There's an Alrun's Epiphany for now. And a Galazeth Prismari, which we can binding. And a Clutches too. Alright, we've got a few options. Could also just play a second Frog Hemoth. Although, killing the dragon is pretty good value too. If we just play a second Frog Hemoth, attack with both, they can double block one, trade for Prismari. I think I still prefer Binding. They could have scarier dragons in their deck, of course. 
Alright, Disdainful Stroke to counter. And then I'm okay trading Frog Hemoth since we have another one. And then I'll just exile the Magma Opus in case I have any shenanigans to get it back. Leave the rest for future Frog Hemoths. Opponent foretells two cards, so the clutches is not going to get anything. Now we do have the option of commanding the treasure token. Sadly, it doesn't leave enough mana to also cast a frog hemoth. Otherwise, we could prevent the opponent from countering frog hemoth and kind of force them to counter the command instead. So, feels like I might be better off just casting another Frog Hemoth into a counter. Resolves. So now the Clutches by itself is also lethal. And so is the Witherbloom command. So I think we're okay getting the max amount of life now. Just so we don't die to a combination of extra turn cards and hasty dragons. Up to 24. And there's another epiphany. Take seven. And another epiphany. <laughs> Alright, so I guess we're gonna die to the Hall of the Storm Giants next turn. Well, that was unfortunate. Well, opponent doesn't go for the Hall activation. That's curious. Oh, of course, they just had the fourth epiphany. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure if we could have done much different. Maybe try and cast the clutches earlier instead of getting uh, or play this Daneful Stroked onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand. We've got the Lissat Innkeeper Synergy, Lotus Cobra to give us more mana. I don't think I'm gonna need Kazandu Mammoth, so we'll just play that tapped. And then Vorinclax to combo with Lissette as well. Merfolk Wind Robber. Okay. Let's go with Cobra. Put in blue black rogues. Maybe finally putting Zareth San to good use. It's gonna flunk our Cobra, sadly. Alright, would love to draw an untapped land next turn. Although we could also keep the treasure to ramp into Vorinclax as opposed to spending it on Lissette triggers. Playing Lissette is tempting. Yeah, I'll pay the one. This gives us some pressure even if Lissette gets answered. The next untapped land lets me activate Hive of the Eye Tyrant. And if they're gonna play more creatures, we have Soul Shatter to leverage. Yep. Scavenger is gonna meet the same fate here. They've got to negate, sadly. 
So no tanks this turn. Try again next turn. Let's see if they have a Zareth to cheat in play, maybe. Doesn't look like it. Crippling Fear to take out Innkeeper. Does make Lissette a little bit less impactful. Let's attack. And then... I think I hang on to Soul Shatter at instant speed. Maybe the opponent fires up all of the Storm Giants. Then we can Soul Shatter without running into a counter spell. It's gonna be Behold, so now I'll Soul Shatter. And yeah, Hasty Vorinclex could close out the game for us. Soul Shatter on Lissette, fair enough. Come on, untap land. Wither Bloom Command instead. So... I could take out the Wind Robber, force them to sacrifice it. I could get back an untapped land from my graveyard. And then play Nissa. Or I can just use a different mode on command and not bother killing the Wind Robber. And then maybe just drain the opponent for two. Yeah, that seems reasonable because then Vorinclex might be lethal next turn. So, yeah, let's go for it. Drain him for two, get back a land. And then I can still attack with my 3-3 land from Nyssa. And then next turn I'll be able to play Vorinclex to close out the game. Assuming no removal. They might activate the Hall of the Storm Giants to pressure Nyssa. Which we're fine with. As it'll leave them mostly tapped out. And I guess Lair of the Hydra is also one damage short. Ah, there's a hall. Takes out Nissa. Presumably. So all according to plan. They can block Lair, but they cannot block Vorinclex with a Wind Robber. And that's gonna trample over for the win. Don't think there's a one mana removal spell they can draw here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Gonna hang on to Lissette here. A rune cramp, put onto mill deck. Sadly, we cannot exile our own graveyard with uh, Frog Hemoth to put counters on it. So that's gonna mill us for six. And probably another three before we can remove it. Do I have time to play Lissette, and do I just have to go for Valentin instead? Valentin just doesn't deal any damage, don't think it's worth it. Alright, another Evolving Wilds, Mills for 6. And 
then I'm probably gonna Soul Shatter. They could have a negate, so maybe I should do it under upkeep. Alright, crab down. And time for Lissette's. And that resolves. Okay, we'll hit for four. And then I can play Lotus Cobra, play Alliance, play Clutches. Opponent has not done much these last couple turns. It's because they have a negate in hand. Opponent passes once again. With her bloom command, the draw. Well, that triggers Lissette. So let's go for it. Drain the opponents and then get back aligned. Mill the opponents. Plenty of lands we can get back already. Alright, it does get countered. Hit for six, and then. Yeah, it could be worthwhile to play Valentin for added pressure and to trigger Lissette. Crippling Fear kills two of our creatures. Innkeeper, pretty nice with Lissette as well. Now I can also turn on Hive of the Eye Tyrant instead. Hit him for seven and then Hive is lethal next turn. I think I like that more. Although they might have a removal spell here. Exile doesn't matter too much. Probably want to leave the creature there in case we draw Frog Hemoth. Although, don't think that's going to matter at this point. Alright, opponent's going to mill us out or find two removal spells. And a Soaring Thought Thief is not going to do it. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. And then I think I hang on to Mammoth as a creature. Turn to Cobra. Turn three. Play Mammoth even if Cobra dies. And yep. Mammoth it is. Next turn. Nissa can animate our forest and attack for a bunch. Well, let's see if they have another frostbite. They do, unfortunately. Okay. opponent with a very removal heavy start, some efficient frost bites. There's Galaseth. Ooh, Frog Hemoth. That's exciting. So we have options. Frog Hemoth gets a clean attack in. And then Nissa probably wants to get back Mammoth from the graveyard.
another frostbite to finish off Nissa. That's fine. And I'm fine just exiling all the frostbites to gain a bit of life here. Against blue red, you never know when they're gonna start deploying more hasty dragons, taking extra turns. Aggressive Shumblock from Galzeth. I guess it didn't want Froghemoth to trigger. Opponent passes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I could play a Lissette main phase to then pay the one after Froghemoth connects. They do a Faceless Haven, which can block Froghemoth technically. So maybe that's why they're uh, so aggressive about chum blocking. And then uh, we can still trample over the Haven for one with Froghemoth to trigger it. And then trigger Lissette's. I think that's still the play here. And then I'll hang on to Mammoth over enabling Landfall. Alright, so Haven activates. Block the frog. And I behold the multiverse, sure. So Froghemoth dies, no point in exiling more creatures, but we can exile a non creature, trigger, pass a turn. Clutches would have been a nice way to set up Froghemoth as well, but it didn't seem all that straightforward to keep it alive. Expressive iteration to go digging, but that's going to leave them with uh, very little mana to answer these two huge creatures, and our opponent packs it in. So we got a revenge against the blue red dragons deck. Yeah, if they don't chain together a bunch of epiphanies, they're going to have a hard time. So overall, didn't see a ton of Froghemoth in action, not as much as I would have liked, but you can see how it uh, fits in this deck nicely with all the mill effects, with Lissette that uh, can also put additional counters on the team, even if we only get one attack in. So yeah, Froghemoth is definitely a nice addition to this archetype overall, and I was also impressed by how good Witherbloom Command was, just a card that doesn't really see a ton of play, but I think we've got just enough synergy to make it a worthy inclusion, and it definitely delivered for us. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.